We're joined again today by Jasmine Oibro, Blend's resident website strategy expert. Jasmine was with us on our last episode to talk about website UX mistakes, which was a really interesting discussion. And we invited her back to help us understand information architecture as a process within B2B website design. Fascinating discussion. Let's go. Can you tell us a bit more about the role of information architecture in B2B website design, please? Sure thing. So information architecture is thinking about how you structure content on a website in a user friendly way. So it's all about thinking about what content do we have? What information do we need to present? So basically the, the where do we put things and how do we put things on there? Um, very plainly explained, I guess it's it's thinking in terms of grouping items and themes into things like similar pages. So we can think about showing our products as, as categories. It can also be informational sections on pages where we know that if we have product information on a page, on a page flow, we want to, to present it in this specific manner so people uh, go through to a PDF uh, to read more or that they can see a product overview table, for example. So a lot of it is about the on-page content of a website, really. And so the question on my mind and probably on that of many listening is, how does that differ from the process of creating a sitemap? Mm. So I think that um, it sort of it influences the creation of a sitemap. So the sitemap itself is basically a drawing of these are all the pages that we have on the website, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, we have a privacy policy, put it on the sitemap. We have a home page. We have these category pages, et cetera, et cetera. The navigation, and I'm just going to mention that because this is one of my pet peeves. We sort of tend to mix them up. Navigation is all about how we access those pages. So visually when a person is on the home page, what do they see in the main menu at the top and what do they see in the footer to access these pages and the information architecture is taking all of those pages into consideration and all of the things that we know we need to present and talk about how do we tie these elements together so the pages of the sitemap with the navigational items with content that may not really be cut out for being their own pages but we need to present it anyway what, what would you say are the benefits of creating an information architecture separately from the sitemap or navigation? Mm. So I think it is that you are aware of what kind of content you can pull in and, and where. Um, so in terms of, for example, on site, you know that we need to present and talk about our investor relations. We need to talk about the, the logos of who is using us. We need to talk about our use cases and it can serve as a little bit of a tick box exercise to make sure you have the right content that you need and also to map out, we lack this content, but it's something that we would want to bring into the website that we either create a space for right now and start making sure that we have in place later on or something that we keep in mind for the future that we may want to add into our arsenal of, of content that we have available to us. Okay, that's quite interesting. So it helps you to diagnose the gap potentially between what you've got available to you now versus what you might ultimately want or need in your website. Um, and it also sounds like it's a effective way of prioritizing and curating the content that you're going to present, presumably around the objective, around the objective of creating those high intent conversions and ultimately pipeline. What sort of exactly. process do people need to follow to create information architecture effectively? When you look at big projects, uh, when so if you if you look online for big projects in terms of doing information architecture, you might stumble across like lucid charts or, or big mappings of sort of these is these are all the, the different PDFs and different documents that we have and how they should be pulled in, et cetera. Um, few of us have got time for that, to be, to be completely frank and honest. 
So I think a good way to get started is being aware of the different content types you have. So one part is obviously website, the website pages that we have in the sitemap. It can be pieces of content that we need to make others aware of or present. Um, it can be things like, ooh, what do you call them? Um, audit investigation trails or investor relation PDFs that you need to share in terms of quarterly reports, for example. You don't need to list out every single one, but if you're aware of the types, that makes it easier later on to have a think about where do we need to place them on the website or do we need to bring them in at all? I see. Um, and a simple tool is using Excel. I myself tend to use online whiteboards so you can sort of map things out with little notes or post-its to just help yourself visualize what you have and how they can link up with the, the website. And uh, what does the output typically, what's the right format for the output? Is it, uh, is it a diagram, a visual thing, or is it a, a, like you say, a spreadsheet of data and information that fuels later processes? I think it depends a little bit on what you want to use it for. So the, the bigger mapping projects where people might be using doing this to create databases for libraries, mm -hmm. or if the BBC, for example, were to take a look at these are all the different kind of journalistic content we have and everything that we're creating, they probably need to dig in a little bit more in depth and have something that they can later reference. So that would very likely be a, a mixture of documents. So they have spreadsheets and they have visual mappings to showcase what's in the spreadsheet. So they can go back and cross reference and make sure everything's being accounted for. When we work with your average B2B website, I'd say we can very, very likely keep it more simple where we have um, an Excel sheet that can be complemented with something that looks very, very similar to sitemap. So we just know the content types and then we can reference the Excel or the spreadsheet for the, the items themselves in case we need to be aware of them, make sure that they're being pulled into places like resource centers and case studies overviews. Okay, I see. And what are some of the most common mistakes that you see people make? And I think you've hinted at one or two of these already. Um, mistakes that people make when they're attempting to create or understand information architecture for their website. So, um, I was working a lot about the, the, the specific content types. Um, so for example, you know, have your webinar, have your event, but we shouldn't forget that information architecture is also a lot about how we present the information for the categories of information we have on the website. That is things like product pages and resources, sorry, product pages and services. Mm -hmm. Um, it is also about how we label these things and make it easy for people to understand and find them. So if we have a very complex setup of products, it's usually easy to, to think about clothing shops online just because they do it very well. Information architecture for them is not about we have a product page, it's more about what products do we have in a lineup and how do we put them into categories? These are our socks, these are our children's socks, or our men's socks, where do they sort of overlap with each other? Mm. Um, and in presenting that, it's not just how do we bring that onto other pages so people can click into the right thing, but also how do people understand and find these labels in things like the navigation menu. Right, right. And I know wanting to be creative, I've been here myself, uh, we, we want to say cool things in the navigation like, you know, your lifestyle, click on this and all of a sudden, you know, we'll get a couple of drop down options about our fantastic products for your lifestyle. But people don't understand that. And part of information architecture is making sure that we use user friendly language to label the products in a way so people understand these are products, this is where I go to find your products, and then continue my journey from there. Oh, I see. I see. And uh, have you got any examples, shining examples of good information architecture in practice? So, for example, websites people can look at or, or things that you think you, you see when information architecture has been done well? 
On bigger websites, my favorite example is probably The Guardian. So it's a, it's a British newspaper. And what they do well in terms of navigation is that they keep it very simple because they've got loads of journalistic content that and have lots of categories and subcategories and cross-sectional categories, etc. And to not freak people out who are visiting the website, they've stripped a lot of that back, keep it very simple so you have a couple of options to choose between. On the page itself, they also bunch the content together so you have clear sections. These are world news, these are UK internal news, these are Asia-related news, etc. And when you go into the specific articles, you can also see that they have other ways for you to navigate to your related content. So they're doing a very, very good job in showing how you can think about in categorizing things, labeling them, and then also using the power of on-site, on, on-page content, the power of on, on-page, I can't pronounce that, how you can use the power of on-page content to help people navigate to other pages without adding all of that into a menu. It sounds to me as though good information architecture is evident when, uh, you know, uh, uh, the information within a site, no matter how big or small it is, is presented via a very intuitive and constrained set that's easy for buyers to instinctively choose between. And then it also sounds as though navigation between content, potentially via means other than the main website navigation is aligned to the user expectations and requirements and I, and I say that because in sites where you're not presenting articles as your main piece of content you know you'll just you'll find in in my experience that related content similar content content by this author for example is not very effective at getting buyers and, and, and visitors to navigate through, but there are ways that you can use on page signposting and linking that are contextual to the situation, to the, to the, to the market, to the website. Um, and they're aligned to what the buyers need and want from your website. And in your last, um, section there, yeah, it really became clear to me that information architecture is about getting your site into that place where what buyers need from it is in easily accessible um, and their choices are limited in a in a constructive way yeah it's um oh it's a little bit like getting a toddler to take a bath where okay. you know it, <laughs> so we we love our site visitors but as marketers we have a purpose behind everything we do in the the content that we put on a website Oftentimes it is to inform people, to make them understand, you know, who, that they're the right audience, and then ultimately reach out to us to inquire about services or products. And some of the risks of introducing too much and choice paralysis, as it's been spoken about before, is that it's sort of like telling a toddler, when do you want to take a bath? And they don't, they're just going to say never, they don't want to take a bath. But if they get the option of like, do you want to have a bath before dinner or after dinner, then it's a binary choice and it's much easier for them to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll pick that option. Yeah, great example. Yeah. <laughs> it, I often remind people that, you know, when buyers are on our website, they are completely at their own, uh, you know, um, they're outside of our control. We can't tell them what to do. We can't make them do anything. What we have to do is create a user experience, an environment in which they do things that are mutually beneficial, meet their requirements for the visit, but also progress them towards meeting our requirements for the visit. And information architecture is, it sounds, a key way to uh, you know, in ensure you're heading in the right direction when creating your website to achieve that outcome right from the start. Thank you. Mm -hmm.